Hello, I want to welcome everybody attending our LGBT LULAC uh, Summit. Uh, as many of you know, uh, we are uh, in LULAC proud of all our members. I'm especially proud of where the LGBT community has gone here in the last couple of years. Uh, I'm from Dallas, Texas, and the first LGBT council was formed in Dallas. Uh, and since then, uh, our councils have grown throughout the country. I, we continue to make sure that everybody has an opportunity and the right and the ability to serve our great organization as we move forward. I'm very proud of the work that Jesse Garcia, who is the first board member that I appointed from the LGBT community to our National Lulac Board, because I believe every voice should be heard and every uh, option of what we do on our public policy at the national, state, and local level has to have our input. So I look forward to having your ideas, las ganas, and ánimo de hacer la diferencia to make a difference for every Jose and Maria out there in this country. And I hope that you continue to have a successful organization and a great plan of action that you come forward out of the summit that we can implement in 2023. And that's yes. He still loves me, Ghost Chat. Wonderful welcome message. My name is Jesse Nancy, and I'm the chair of the Black National uh, LGBTQ uh, Affairs Committee. I've been in this role for the last uh, three out of the last four years. And it's been a great opportunity to meet so many LULAC LGBT members across the nation. Uh, I want to add, especially that LULAC Council 11, uh, what, what to revive LULAC Langdon for most of this year's event. You have had our female the presidents here. Uh, I also want to thank members of the National LULAC LGBTQ Affairs Committee for organizing this event and by encouraging us uh, to do better and get good speakers. I want to thank the National Rulex staff for being here for their technical assistance. And I just want to give you a little uh, background about Reverend Rulex. In the last 20 years, Rulex has increased the dialogue between the Latino and LGBTQ community by encouraging membership of openly LGBTQ individuals, the formation of brave vote councils, and pro-LGBTQ programming at official events. Throughout these two decades, LGBTQ members have distributed pro-LGBTQ resolutions I have authored several of them that have uh, been added to the LULAC agenda. And in return, LULAC LGBTQ members have been advocates for Latino causes in the mainstream LGBTQ community. Today's event is an extension of LULAC's work to prepare our next generation of leaders in the audience uh, to be that important link that advocates for both causes, the Latinx of the LGBTQ and LA. We are extremely proud of the slate of speakers who are subject matter experts with local, state, and federal perspectives on social justice issues important to us. Uh, before we bring uh, our speakers, I'm going to tell you that all the files of the speakers and moderators have been provided to you. This is a really quick conference. We stopped here for four sessions. Uh, we're going to try to cut that time of introducing folks to just two sentences. You've got their extended bios. Uh, with you right now. Uh, and for those who are online, we have those bios available at bluelight.org forward slash pride summit. Uh, next, uh, let me go ahead and introduce our welcome speakers. Before we start a session, I wanted to get some important people in our community to come. Just give you a welcome to the, today's events. Uh, our first speaker is Sora or Fed Out, a local Lulac member and prop to review the marathon who uh, just got hired as a senior advisor for the Office of Public Engagement in the White House. Please welcome Sola. So go back up. Hi, everyone. Um, like Jesse said, my name is Sola Deja. Uh, I just, this is my sixth, seventh week uh, at the White House, but I'm very excited to be here with you about today. Um, I work for the Office of uh, Public Engagement. Our office is basically uh, designed to ensure that we are engaging all communities across the nation, both bringing them into the White House, bringing them into PC, but also finding them where they're at and making sure that we are hearing the perspectives from all different diverse groups of people. My portfolio leads uh, Latino engagement as well as immigration, uh, but we have liaisons for, that will take care of a lot of different communities across the board. Um, so today, I just wanted to spend some time to go through a lot of um, a couple of the things that are uh, 
that the president and the administration have to, that are important to the looking of community, as well as the LGBTQI community. Uh, the president has made this, his commitment to do as much as he can, and we're going to continue working to do that. Um, so first, you know, um, one of the things that we have been focusing on a lot is to ensure that our Latino community is going, you know, rebuilding the, the uh, rebuilding our economy, rebuilding coming back from COVID. I know COVID is still rampant in our communities. Uh, so we want to make sure that our community is also getting access to, for, uh, to still access to vaccines, still access to healthcare, but also we want to make sure that we are reopening up our schools. We have been um, making sure that we're making healthcare more affordable for folks here. And the president has also done a lot of different things to help with the um, Helping with our the economy, so making sure that student loan relief that's going to be affecting a lot of st um, a lot of Latinos. Uh, over half of Latinos, about half um, of the Latino population is actually going to get their student loans canceled with the twenty thousand student loan forgiveness program. And we're also the administration has also lowered Hispanic unemployment to its lowest, helping Latinos get back to work, as well as reopening schools and making sure our kids are getting back to school. Um, the administration has also taken historic steps to strengthen civil rights protections for the LGBTQI community um, and uh, to uh, and advance equity and opportunity. Um, as uh, I'm sure some of you know, the president, uh, on his first day in office, signed an executive order on preventing and combating discrimination against LGBTQI Americans. That order directed agencies to fully enforce civil rights laws to prevent discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. It has led to key agencies to strengthen non-discrimination protections for LGBTQI people in housing, healthcare, education, the criminal justice system, as well as federal and lending services. Uh, during Pride Month this year as well, the president signed an executive order to advance equity, equality for LGBTQI individuals. Uh, and this executive order is a defined part of executive order, including one, responding to harmful state attacks of LGBTQI youth, Two, limiting the harms of conversion of uh, conversion therapy by ensuring that um, it is ineligible for federal bias. Three, expanding funding to voluntary programs that counsel parents LGBTQI children and reviewing eligibility standards that limit LGBTQI and other families from accessing federal benefits. Four, supporting LGBTQI youth in the child welfare in the juvenile systems and extend for our experience when goal is this. And lastly, five, by promoting access to mental health and suicide prevention care. Um, the president has also worked to strengthen support for, um, and protections for transgender Americans. Um, especially important this week, about uh, the president has rescinded a uh, discriminatory ban on transgender service members and they enabling all qualified members of uh, all qualified Americans to serve their country. The administration has also taken important steps to address systemic discrimination and violence um, by having the State Department expand access to more inclusive U.S. passports by offering an ex-gender marker to ensure gender non-binary Americans get access to accurate federal ID. Um, oops. Uh, the administration has also restored key protections for transgender people experiencing homelessness and, homelessness and established its first of its kind interagency working group to coordinate a government-wide response to the prices of anti-gender violence, which disproportionately impacts women and girls of color. And lastly, um, aside from all of these like, federal uh, mandates that he has uh, put into place, he's also delivered on his commitment to have an administration that's reflective over our country by appointing historically diverse administration from the top down, which could be reflected through our agency heads as well as staff appointees. Uh, so he has done a lot of that work to ensure that we are that, that his administration that is not only reflective on like the policies that he's being advised on but also be reflected that way and while we continue to fight for more protections and more access uh our office office of public engagement has focused on also creating an environment that we can celebrate our community by providing platforms to tell our stories both digitally digitally and in person and inviting finalists to the white house we were able to invite some of the uh DC Latino youth out to the Halloween um, celebration that the, the First Lady had this year. And we're going to continue working on this partnership with Fulad to ensure that we can bring in as many people while you're here to visit the White House because it is your house and it's the Americans people's house. So we're trying to make that more accessible for votes. Uh, and lastly, as you know, especially during this time, Latino community is not a monolith and it takes a lot of work to reach Latinos. And this is why the White House, as well as like, our office, uh, is doing the hard work of engaging communities across the country. We're mobilizing local leaders. We're bringing the state Latino cultures to the White House. 
and meeting people where they are and sending our message and agenda to be center compulsive farming to be wall. Uh, so we know that there's a lot more, more work to be done. And we're so thankful for our partnership with Jesse, our partnership with the Black Man Dog, our partnership with the National Blue Black as well. Um, and we continue just to work together to make sure that, you know, our voices are represented all over the White House and um, all over these policies that are impacting our community. So thank you all um, and happy. Thank you so much. Uh, I do want to thank the so long kind of thing. Uh, she called Kay to invite our, our elite that we mentored to the White House. And it was such a big moment for them to actually be in this historic space. And it was just not us. She reached out to Belsa Maryland that works a lot with the river communities. So I was great to see their staff members and their clients have access to this most important national symbol. So thank you for giving us access and make sure to uh, connect with Sol before you eat. So good for me and had access to the White House. Our next speaker is an internationally recognized gender Latina activist who received her master's degree at, uh, at Mexican and Latinx studies from the California State University, Los Angeles, and serves as the president and CEO of the Trans Latino Coalition. He's welcome, our friend, Fabri Sapsella. Feast. Thank you. Um, Pero primero que nada, buenos días, buenos días a todas, a todos, a todos. A ti. Uh, quiero dar gracias a ustedes por su presencia. Quiero, en la tierra en la que estamos hoy en día, y quiero uh, dar gracias a nuestro creador por darnos la oportunidad de vivir un día más. Uh, greetings, everyone. I'm not sure if everybody speaks saying it's Spanish, but uh, I always honor my higher power for giving me the opportunity to breathe one more day. I honor the man who was sending out today. And obviously I honor your process. Uh, thank you so much to uh, Jesse and the committee for allowing me to be here and to address you. Uh, I was asked to talk to you about, uh, you know, essentially uh, where we are we all know the political climate that we're experiencing today. And I want to uh, obviously remind you, right, that, um, that we are in a critical moment. Our communities are always in critical moments, right? And it is time for us to really activate, right? Uh, we have been under attack for many, many years. Uh, and we need to make sure that the voices of our communities, particularly those who are the most marginalized, right? Black, indigenous, Latinx individuals, uh, us, right, who are part of the diaspora of the LGBTQ community, right, that we understand uh, what needs to happen. And what needs to happen is that we need to make sure that we continue to strategize, that we continue to um, to plan uh, activities, right, that are not going to make us silent anymore, right? That we continue to um, to be uh, aggressive, honestly, right? Because unfortunately, what happens to many of us is that we think that some of the issues that are happening, happening, if they don't affect us or impact us directly, that is not our issue. Right? But we have to understand that the attacks that our community gets, it's, I guess, all of us. Right? And so we want to make sure that, you know, that this type of forums are important for us to ensure that we do what needs to be done. And what needs to be done is uh, a couple of things. We need to be able to exercise, practice radical self care, right? because we want for all of us to live longer, to, um, and to also be healthy and to be happy and to be joyous and to ultimately uh, seek the liberation and the freedom that we all want, right? And the other thing that I want to look on for us to think about, it really is about how is it that we are going to organize locally, right? Uh, I, uh, I come from California, 
And many people think that California is the heaven for everybody, right? But that is false. The truth is that, you know, it really depends on where you go in California, right? Like you can be in Los Angeles County and even Los Angeles County is also marginalizing and oppressive, right? But if you go like uh, just 20 miles either south or north, right? Orange County is a, a very Republican space. Uh, if they go to Bakersfield, it's, you know, that's where they help prisons. And there's a lot of correctional officers that are, all, are also Republicans, right? Like, so we call it Council, right? Um, and so even in California, right, there is, there is a tax against our community, right? Like some of you may remember that the governor uh, was being recalled, right, uh, just a few months ago, right? Um, Obviously, it didn't succeed, but still, this, this type of things continue to happen, right? And it really depends on where you are. If you're in Texas, obviously, we know what is happening in the South against our communities. And so, we cannot continue to be complacent, right? We need to activate uh, in a radical way also, right? Um, we know that, you know, historically, there have been, that there have been many movements that have taught us how to activate and how to do things that are uh, successful for our peoples. And so let's take back our power and let's activate. Let's do what needs to be done. And let's not be complacent, right? Because complacency is not going to take us to the finish line. And we have to remember that we are privileged, right? That we are here uh, on behalf of many members of our community who are not uh, privileged as we are. And they're the ones who continue to struggle to survive. Uh, and so I, I, I want to thank you once again. I want to thank the uh, selection committee for asking me to come and, and, and speak with you. Um, I want uh, also, once again, thank you so much for with your intention and thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. Okay, now she take the top one. Now we have the same time. For so many years, she's attended LULAC conventions and shared her wisdom. She served on the very first inaugural committee what we launched in 2018. I asked her, I, go, I know you're super busy, but can you be on this committee that LULAC's watching for at the LGBT community? And she said yes. And she gave us so much advice and guidance, and whenever we have a problem, we reach out to her as she provides that assistance. So thank you for the bottle for our for being not only a friend, but a, a metric. We get the piece of this. Our next speaker uh, just got reelected this Tuesday with more than 16,000 votes from his community to serve at the Maryland House of Delegates. He is the first openly queer afro Latino and one uh, of the youngest people to be ever elected to the Maryland General Assembly, please welcome the Honorable Gabriel Alcibet. Good morning. Or oh, yes, um, it is good to see everyone. First, thank you so much. Can we give it up for Jesse Gart? But he's a friend, comrade, but he's also um, family. And Jesse has been, um, as well as a lot of other folks, have been the driving force behind ULAC and its LGBTQ plus uh, caucus and making sure that we are not just seen, um, but we have spaces to be able to convene, to organize, to strategize, and figure out how we as a community can uplift each other and thrive, right? So thank you so much, Jesse. And I want to give it up to, you, um, you know, LULAC, as was mentioned. Um, an organization that has been around for a really long time and serves uh, to ensure that we have representation. Um, and so for that, to the League of United Latin American Citizens, can we give it up for LULAC and for our chapter as well. Um, so as was mentioned, I'm Deputy Gabriel Acevedo. Um, I am proud to represent the 39th district out in Montgomery County. Uh, in 2018, I ran and was elected to the state legislature, became the first openly queer Afro-Latino elected. Um, certainly not the only Afro-Latinx person to serve in the le legislature, but the first queer one. 
And that is something that I not only take seriously as, um, you know, sort of like a badge of pride, but understanding that that comes with the responsibility to build a pipeline to ensure that while I am the first, that I am not the last and we're picking short and permitting space for the people that are coming behind us, right? Because that's the whole purpose of each and every one of us operating in the spaces that we do is to ensure that we're not just the first, but we're not the only ones in those spaces from nonprofits to C-suites, the places, uh, um, you know, in government, we have to ensure that we're represented um, because this is America, right? We are America. Right. Um, and whether folks are willing to acknowledge that or not, the contributions that we have made to the social, economic and political fabric of America cannot be denied. It's a matter of historical fact. And so we are the descendants of the legacy of Sylvia Rivera and Ray Navarro from ACT UP, right? And Chabela Vargas and so many other folks who have ensured that we can show up in these spaces and do so unapologetically. We have to be proud of that history and we have to be willing to take up space. I don't care who is uncomfortable by me being in a room. I'm going to take up that space because I know, as Baldwin rightly put it, my crown has been bought and paid for. All I got to do is wear it. Right? So thank you so much to Gulak. Um, I'm, I'm just here, you know, this morning because, you know, I was listening to, you know, um, the previous panel and, you know, just what the theme of this summit is this year around unity and ensuring that we as a community are well and we're thriving. And so that to me um, is very important because when we look at uh, the circumstances that are taking place right now, whether it's for immigrant justice or LGBTQ plus equality or liberation, or whether it's dealing with white supremacy, a problem that not only impacts um, you know, black folks, Afro-Latinos, but it's something that is very much pervasive within the Latinx community that we have to be honest and willing to confront. White supremacy is not going to save or help any one of us. And I'm not just talking about, um, you know, those who are part of the Latinx community who do not identify as Afro-Latino. I'm talking also to my white Latino brothers and sisters you will not benefit from white supremacy and all of us has a vested stake in dismantling it and ensuring that we as a community, as Latinx folks, that we're embracing the diversity and we're fighting for every single person in our community. I am willing to fight for people that I don't know, but I know that ultimately that I am here because somebody didn't know me, who didn't even know that I was going to be here today, was willing to put in that work. And so if you are not willing to do that, and we don't really understand the meaning of community, right? That's the whole purpose of this summit is around unity. But of course, you know, anybody that, you know, examines the word community, you can't have community without unity. And the whole important thing about unity is that we can't have unity without justice. We can't have justice without truth telling and we can't have truth telling without courage. And we as a community have to have the courage to confront anti-blackness because it's pervasive. Right? No way to that. You no, know, and I'm Afro Latino. As I see it, you know, the, the way we speak, the way our tians, the way our uncles, the way folks speak, and, and we allow these things to happen because we don't challenge it. You have a responsibility to ensure that you're standing up and you're confronting anti blackness within our community just as vigorously as you're doing it outside of our community. Right? So this morning, it's about us not just being united, but it's also about us of agreeing on what our shared values, what our shared goals are, because over the next five to 10 years, the work that we're going to do and the work that we're gonna to have to do is gonna require all of us in this room. And so I'm excited about that work. I recognize that, you know, I take, um, you know, the, the, the responsibility of not just fighting for those issues, but ensuring that I'm representing my community to the best of my ability, right? Because all of that is important. There is all these perceptions of who we are and, you know, how we serve. And we're going to dismantle, we're going to, you know, uh, uh, disprove everyone who has ever believed that we do not deserve to be in spaces of power. And we're doing that right now. And so thank you all so very much. I mean, I'm excited, you know, to continue to work over the next four years. I was just reelected last week to a second term, and I'm really, really, really excited about the... <laughs> 
And I'm really excited about what we're going to be doing as a member of the Maryland Legislative Latino Caucus. We have so much work that we need to do to ensure civic engagement, to ensure that everyone in our community uh, is able to survive and to thrive and that no one is left behind, right? That's our goal. And so this morning, I want to thank, uh, again, uh, the LULAC LGBTQ plus um, uh, caucus who have been so active and so engaged um, in ensuring that our community has what it needs. I hope that this is not the end of our organizing. You know, Stokely Carmichael rightly put it that organizing is the tool of the oppressed. And we know we live in an oppressive system. So if we're not organizing, if we're not strategizing, if we're not mobilizing, and if we're not willing to fight for every single member of our community, especially those that we do not know, then we are not interested in the work of freedom and we're certainly not interested in liberation. So thank you all so very much and let us continue to show up for each other. Solidarity is a really powerful thing. And I know that's something that's present in this room uh, this morning. So let's continue to do that. One of my favorite quotes is Ganaremos un dia. One day we will win because something about it just tells me that's not just hope, but it speaks to the work that we need to do. So thank you all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.